Hey there, welcome back to Creepy Encounters. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the videos. To people who live in a haunted house, what are your stories? My house was built in the 20s and several different families have lived here in the past. There's always someone home and we have several pets so it isn't noticeably creepy, but the few times some weirdness went down it was downright chilling. There was a hot night my now ex-partner couldn't fall asleep so she sat up watching TV. She heard me calling for her from the dark hallway to our room and saw my shadow move. I had hurt myself with a knife while making dinner hours ago so she was worried the bandages needed to be changed. She quickly got up to check on me, but I was deep asleep and could not have possibly been calling for her from the doorway. She decided to watch TV in our room with the door closed and a light on after that. Another time I was alone, trying to take a midday nap after working a grueling 90 hour week, and heard footsteps move across the floor. I felt the bed shift behind me like someone was lying down, which was nice until I remembered that my ex was out of town visiting family that weekend so I could rest. I felt so cold from fear and wanted to run, but I was so tired and had finally started to get comfortable. So I said aloud, you can stay, but my back hurts and I am exhausted so please be kind and let me sleep. I've had a really rough week and this is my only day off. And that's how I ended up spooning the house ghost. Those were the two most notable events. Most of the time things just go missing and pop up in the strangest places. It could be worse, I guess. My house isn't haunted, but my girlfriend is. She claims that there was a large black being that always followed her around. When she's going to sleep, in the dark, she can feel it stroke her hair. Some mornings she'll wake up with scratches or bruises or handprints. She has those glow-in-the-dark star stickers all over her drawers and one on her closet door. Just one, about six and a half feet up. I've seen it flicker on and off in the middle of the night. A glow-in-the-dark sticker shouldn't flicker. The only way a sticker can turn off and on again is if someone or something is standing slash walking slash swaying in front of it. One night, we were in bed, after lights had been turned out, and I felt her roll over and put her arm across me. This was odd because she's never the big spoon, but I figured it let it happen. Even though the lights were out, through the glow of phone chargers and standby lights of various electronics, I was able to make out an arm wrapped around my chest. I reclosed my eyes and went to grab her hand, but missed. I looked again and saw nothing. I rolled onto my back and looked over at my girlfriend, all the way on the other side of the bed, with her back to me. So TLDR, I got spooned by A. Something. My grandmother's house where I would spend most weekends as a kid was said to be haunted. I never experienced anything personally, but my mom, aunts, and uncle all have the same few stories. The first is a family photo of everyone being taken in the front yard. Grandmother, grandfather, my mom, aunt one, aunt two, and uncle all in front of the house. The kids were a all under 10 years old and no one was in the house, but in the photo there was a man standing in the window of the house looking towards the camera. The man looked to be in his 60s with dark hair and glasses. No one knew who he was. The second was my great aunt, who moved into the house as she got older, and the kids were in the process of moving out etc. She loved to play piano. No one was allowed to play her piano but her and was kept locked in her bedroom. During the wake after the funeral, her piano began to play several of the songs she used to know without sheet music. The door was locked and no one by my grandmother had the key. This was before my time, but I've heard these same stories by many different family members. Two neighbors have died in the apartment next door but I only had a ghostly encounter with one. That was when I was four years old in the 90s. I used to play with the deceased woman's kid all the time and she would watch over us, this is while she was alive. She died in a really bad car accident. Few nights after she passed, I saw her when I looked up while laying in bed, she was smiling down at me and calling me to her. I looked toward the bedroom door cause my grandma was on her way to the room, when I looked up she was gone. I never saw her ghost again. When I told my family they were afraid and took me to see a priest. The neighbors who moved in next door have told us they'd seen her walking around the apartment or a strong perfume scent would suddenly appear in some areas. The wife died of breast cancer in 2012 but she had told us that the woman appeared to her several times with a sad expression, after she was diagnosed she took it as the ghost woman warning her of what was to happen. Not my current house, but the one I grew up in. It was built in the late 1800s. Which for America, is pretty old for a dwelling. There was always some sort of activity. Nothing ever seemed to harbor any malice, but it was definitely present. Had I been the only one experiencing things, I would have chalked it up to me being crazy. However, there was almost always someone else around to verify what had just occurred. 
We had the classic someone is on the stairs, but it was coupled with footsteps running around once they reached the second floor. You'd often see things from the corner of your eye, and dismiss it. Until it would circle back, and you'd get a better look. In particular there was a little girl who'd frequent the doorways of the upstairs. She was about the height of the doorknob, and would peek in, and then run away. I'd often have friends over, and I'd notice their gaze lock on the door. I'd ask if they saw someone, and they'd describe her to a T without me giving any descriptors. Had an encounter with a shadow figure there as well. There was always a sort of energy there, you never felt alone. I lived in another house that was haunted after this one. Not sure if I'm susceptible, or something more than what we packed came along for the move. I lived and worked in an enormous, 50 comma 000 plus square feet, dozens of rooms, mansion slash castle which had a reputation for being haunted. The day I moved in I saw a man walk down a very long gallery and go through the last door on the right. I followed and when I got to that door I saw that they were in swinging, and that they were bolted shut with chairs in front of them. I also had one of a pair of cufflinks disappear. Weeks later I had cleared my bedroom to vacuum the enormous carpet in it. I was in the middle of the room when I heard something hit the floor and tap the back of my foot. I looked down and behind me and saw the cufflink on the floor, and it was polished. I picked it up, put it beside its unpolished mate and left the room. When I came back the other one was missing. Found it weeks later on a windowsill on the other end of the floor I was on, 160 or so feet away. Many other stories. My aunt's old house. Randomly but at least twice a week you could hear a big animal or dog get up and run across the hardwood floor. Also barking. You could hear a dog barking but no dog was in the house or near it. The house that I lived in a few years ago was very active. The most common occurrences consisted of knocking on the doors and windows, always three knocks, the bathroom door opening and closing on its own, if the door started to open slash close and you told it to stop it would cease immediately, the feeling of being watched. Less frequent, but still somewhat common were the sounds of furniture being moved and moving objects. The most frightening things that happened there included. My roommate Kay and I had been in bed for about 45 minutes when suddenly something slammed into the bed with enough force to shake the whole mattress. My bed frame didn't fit in the small room, so the mattress was on the box spring on the floor. Both Kay and I felt it. We turned the light on and there was nothing so we got as far from the edges of the bed as possible and tried to sleep. Something grabbed Kay's foot and yanked her blanket away. Once again the light revealed nothing and we were terrified. Something slammed into the wall next to the other side of the bed. These things continued into the night and we ended up sleeping in the living room with my dad staying with us. My parents eventually moved out after a few months into the house they were working on and left us the hell house. Kay and I moved into the master room and made our old room the area where we kept our two new puppies kennels. On three occasions my eight-month-old Pitt would walk into that room, throw himself on the floor with all of his hair standing on end, and scream and growl while fixated on the upper corner of the room. When he would do this I would have to physically drag him from the room and shut the door to calm him. The other dog would somehow get out of a locked kennel when he was left in there alone and the kennel would still be locked and secure, we still have no idea how he did it. Kay and my mother started hearing voices when they were there alone and the uncomfortable feeling got worse. One night something started clawing at our bedroom door from top to bottom and we we so freaked out by it that I called my BF, he had a room on the other side of the house, to come look at the door from the other side because I was too scared to unlock and open it. We are very thankful to be free of that nightmare. The house had to be torn down after a hurricane and we moved instead of rebuilding there. I hope you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more real life creepy encounters around the world. See you in the next video. Bye.